news, everyone. Gas prices have fallen from $4.95 a gallon to $4.90 a gallon. Let's take advantage of our newfound financial windfall by taking the Ford F-150 Raptor R and Ram 1500 TRX for an on and off-road joyride. Now, opportunities for really awesome content like this don't come around very often unless you're subscribed to the Motor One YouTube channel. So be sure to smash that button and ring that bell. And you can also find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. Now, before we hit the trail, let's spend some time on pavement in both of these trucks. And first up is the Ford F-150 Raptor R. Now, as you probably know, when the 2017 Raptor debuted, a lot of people were kind of frustrated that it came with a twin turbocharged V6 instead of a V8. And the V6 definitely provided plenty of power, as it does in today's Raptor, but the soundtrack is maybe lacking just a little bit, and some people will always think that a V8 is better than a V6, no matter how many turbos you slap on it. So when the current Raptor came around a couple of years ago, a lot of us thought that Ford would probably offer it with the 5 liter V8. And then the Raptor R happened with a supercharged 5.2 liter V8 borrowed from the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. I mean, what were they thinking? They must have gone absolutely off their rockers to put this engine in this truck. But no matter how crazy the decision might seem from the outside, the results speak for themselves. 700 horsepower and 640 pound-feet of torque coming from that supercharged V8, routing power through a 10-speed automatic transmission to the standard Raptor's regular four- and all-wheel drive transfer case. The result of all those numbers is a 0-60 to 60 estimate of 4.4 seconds, blisteringly fast for a full-size truck. The supercharger also provides instantaneous boost, making it feel just a little bit less laggy than the 3.5 liter turbocharged V6 found in the standard Raptor. Aside from the massive engine, the rest of the specification should feel pretty familiar to anyone who spent time looking at a regular Ford Raptor. The R gets standard 37 inch tires, which are an option on the regular car. It also gets 13.1 inches of ground clearance, 14 inches of front suspension travel, and 13.1 inches of rear suspension travel. The new Raptor R is about as close as you can get to a Baja Trophy truck while still being able to drive it on public roads. There are just a couple of cosmetic alterations going from the Raptor R to the regular Raptor. The body side graphic has a bunch of tiny little eights scattered throughout, denoting that this car has eight cylinders rather than six. The Raptor R also gets standard Recaro racing buckets and carbon fiber interior accents to kind of help set it apart from the rest of the F-150 Raptor family. And when you take it all in sum, it feels like a pretty special vehicle, honestly. I've driven the Raptor before and I actually really like the standard Raptor. This one doesn't necessarily feel completely different, at least until you dip into the accelerator. It definitely feels about as fast as the standard Raptor, but it sounds so much more aggressive. And that could be worth the R package's $30,000 price to the right buyer. Now, because most buyers of the F-150 Raptor R are probably gonna spend a lot of their time on pavement, let's just talk really quick about how this thing drives. Now, the entire Raptor family is very, very wide, and it needs to be to provide the kind of stability that you want when you're tearing across Baja at 80 miles an hour. But when you get up into a canyon road like this, the truck actually kind of shrinks around you and it starts to feel really compact and really nimble and really maneuverable. You didn't believe that for a second, did you? Because if you did, you need to get your head checked right away by a licensed mental health professional. It doesn't matter where you're driving, whether it's on the highway, in the city, or a canyon road like this one, the Raptor just feels kind of big. And even with the lane assist feature active, it's kind of hard to keep it perfectly centered in between the lane lines. You'll find yourself edging just a little bit too close to the shoulder or a little bit too close to the center, but ultimately that's the price you pay for capability and it applies to the TRX as well. Speaking of the TRX, let's take it for a quick spin and see how Ram's Raptor Killer does out on the open road. Right off the bat, the TRX goes all in on power, courtesy of its 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8, 702 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. That's right, this one gets the Hellcat. The TRX has two extra horsepower and 10 more pound-feet compared to the Raptor R, but it's also carrying around about 300 extra pounds of weight. And that means that response is just a little bit more sluggish than in the Ford, although you'd never call a zero to 60 time of 4.5 seconds slow. What's more, the throttle response is much sharper, making it easier to break the rear tires loose when you want to when you're driving down a dirt road. Now, as much as I love the sound of the Ford supercharged V8, I loved it in the GT500 and I love it in the Raptor, 
I think the Hellcat sounds even better. Hold on just a little bit. Let me downshift so you can really hear this thing sing out. Now, supercharger wine isn't for everyone, but it is absolutely for me. I think the Hellcat sounds so good. While the Raptor really impresses you with the tuning of its exhaust, the Hellcat impresses you with the sound of that supercharger under the hood. It is just such a thrill. Most of the complaints I have about the Raptor also apply to the TRX, which shouldn't really surprise anyone. This truck is massive. It is just absolutely gigantic compared to every other car on the road, except maybe a dually pickup truck. Otherwise, you are the 99th percentile use case that civil engineers dread when they have to design alleyways and roads. I'm really impressed with how well the Raptor drives down the road, and that could either be down to the tuning of the Fox racing shocks, or it could be down to the truck's very stiff structure. The TRX is fine, but it doesn't quite come up to the level of the Raptor. You feel a lot more of the little bumps in the pavement as you're just kind of cruising at a steady speed. That said, the TRX does an exceptional job of absorbing really big bumps. For example, if you come across a surprise speed hump or a big old pothole in the road, the TRX just glides right over the top of it, which is a credit to the Ram's Bilstein suspension. Now the suspension of the TRX is very closely matched to the Raptor. It does come up a little bit short in terms of absolute ground clearance at 11.8 inches. And the front suspension travel is 0.1 inch down on the Raptor at 13 inches even. But the rear suspension travel is up just a little bit over Ford's entry at 14 inches even. So honestly, in either of these trucks, if you come across an obstacle that you can't get over, nothing else that you could buy new from a dealer would be able to do any better. But talk is cheap. We gotta get these things dirty. So let's go head off road. Now, no matter where the majority of your driving is going to be, you probably bought your Raptor R because you wanna eventually take it off road and boy howdy are you gonna have a good time when you do. In addition to or perhaps because of that thrilling Baja mode exhaust, the Raptor R is a really exciting vehicle to hammer across any kind of terrain like this. And Ford has done an incredible job of tuning the suspension to be pretty soft and compliant over big bumps like those while also giving you tons of wheel travel when you need to go over smaller obstacles and kind of sink wheels into ditches one at a time so that you can kind of keep going without losing forward momentum. I don't know how they've done it. I'm not a suspension engineer, so I don't have the answers, but it's truly incredible at how broad the performance envelope of the Raptor is. And that huge performance envelope is probably why a lot of Raptor owners get in a little bit over their heads and end up jumping it too far and deploying the airbags upon landing. But if you can tiptoe up to the edge of that performance envelope without going past it, you're gonna have a hell of a lot of fun. Now the Raptor isn't perfect and it's not the off-roader for all occasions. The width and the long wheelbase come at a penalty when you're maneuvering at slow speeds. You're probably gonna have to take two or three point turns to get around some trail corners. So if you're the kind of person who wants to go anywhere between 25 or 95 miles an hour off-road, the Raptor R is an amazing choice. In fact, it's just about the only choice, except for the vehicle that we're gonna talk about right now. Enthusiasts have been clamoring for a genuine rival to the Ford F-150 Raptor since that car debuted in first generation form about 15 years ago. But no automaker was willing to take up the mantle until the Ram TRX arrived for the 2021 model year. And boy howdy, did it make an entrance with that supercharged 6.2 liter V8 but the Rebel TRX is about way more than just a big old engine and 702 horsepower. It also has a very well-tuned Bilstein adaptive damper suspension <laughs> that does a pretty good job of soaking up some of the bigger bumps like you'd experience in a Raptor. I do have to say though, it is not as glassy smooth off-road as the Raptor is. You definitely feel a lot of these bumps making their way into the cabin and it doesn't detract from the experience that much. You just are being jostled around a little bit more than you would be if you were in the Raptor. It's still a really fun way to get around, especially with a throttle response that is much sharper and much more enjoyable. You can kind of get the car to whip the tail around a little bit more using the throttle because it's just that much more willing to let the rear tires break loose and get you into a nice little drift. That's also pretty handy if you happen to be driving through dunes when you want the tires to be acting like big old paddles. Boy, I am definitely getting 
oh, more beaten up in this thing than I thought I would be. But again, I'm not gonna say this is a bad off-roader. This is still a hell of a lot of fun, especially when the bumps get a little bit smaller and you can kind of open up the throttle and have a good time. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah, we're having a good time. We're having some fun. The TRX also has a little bit more playful of a personality than the Raptor, as is evidenced by this really funny little Easter egg that's found under the airbox. But does that symbolism hold true? Let's go break it down. The bottom line is this. I am neither brave enough nor talented enough to take either one of these trucks anywhere close to their limits. These are both incredibly fast, very capable high-speed off-roaders. So if you're someone like me, you're gonna have an awesome time in either one of them and still feel like you've got a big old cushion of safety to catch you if you really decide you wanna screw it up. But you tuned in to watch a comparison and you're probably curious to know if there's a winner. I truly have a very hard time answering that question, except to say that I am standing a little bit closer to the F-150 Raptor R than I am the TRX. That's not to say that Ram hasn't done a wonderful job with their 702 horsepower supercharged off-road monster. I can't get enough of that sultry, seductive whine that comes from under the hood whenever you take off from a standstill. And the exterior looks fantastic with just a few vents in in just the right places and these big bold fenders telegraphing to the world that you're driving something special. But I just keep coming back to the Raptor. The suspension is masterfully tuned for a variety of off-road situations and Ford includes tons of different terrain modes so that if you do end up somewhere where it's not wide open desert, you can still have a pretty good time. And although the mandatory six-figure price of the Raptor R is a bit of a problem in a world where you could get a TRX without some of the bells and whistles for less than $90,000, I still think that this is one hell of an off-road machine. The bottom line is, if you've got 100 grand to spend on a 700 horsepower off-roader, well, you're pretty darn lucky that both of these options are fantastic. Thanks for watching.